Uh, look, I, you know, I think with a debate like this, it should be about policies and it shouldn't be about personalities. And it's easy for me to have a dig uh, at Tony Blair and we could just descend into a personal thanking match. I think the issue about left or right, I think it's a bit misleading, to be honest. I don't think outside of politicos, maybe like me and yourself and the other Owen, most people don't think in terms of left or right. They think in terms of issues to be addressed in a way that's convincing and coherent, that resonates with their experiences, told in a language they understand. And the trick for Labour or for any left coalition is to build up support amongst low-income and middle-income people. That's the majority of society. And anyone standing for the Labour leader uh, ship has to prove that. Now, I actually think you don't actually have to stick to the old new Labour playbook. There are lots of things which went wrong, like the Iraq war, for example, like abolishing uh, the 10p rate uh, of tax uh, back then, like not regulating the city. That went wrong, and I think it's possible to have a different approach which helps stand up for people who are underrepresented in society, but also middle-income people as well. OK, I do the gags, just to be clear, young man. Owen Bennett, um, as far as you're concerned, it, are they wrong to have four separate candidates on the, on the leadership uh, ballot paper? And also, has it gone on for too long? I don't think they're wrong to have four on there. I don't think it's a matter of the numbers. Um, I think, is it going on too long? It certainly feels like it. I don't even know if we're halfway through yet. And I don't know how much more we're going to get from these hustings that we've already, that we have had already. But I'd like to say, to, you know, pick up Owen Jones's point. He says, let's not talk in terms of left and right. And then he says, we need a left-wing coalition. So he's using the terms that he's saying... I, I, didn't, I said a coalition. The le Sorry, just to clarify that. In terms of a political movement, Labour has to build a broad coalition of working people, the majority of society, people who keep society ticking day after day. Okay. And that's low-income and middle-income people alike. That's my point. Owen Bennett, you were saying? Well, I, I don't see how you can build this broad coalition if you take the very aspects of the previous campaign which hasn't worked and try and use that as a base somehow to try and reach out to people who voted Conservative. I mean, I can't think of a single person who voted for David Cameron in 2015 who sees Jeremy Corbyn become leader of the Labour Party and goes, oh... That's the answer that I was looking for. I'm going to vote for Labour now. I just don't think... I just, I just think you're living in fantasy world, really. The, the problem with Labour in terms of the last election is it hemorrhaged support all over the place. It lost 40 seats, of course, uh, to the Scottish National Party, a party which positioned itself uh, to the left of the Labour Party. That had, a, that had a real impact in England and Wales as well because a huge number of voters were concerned about the idea, and it was drummed into them by the media a lot, of this idea that Labour could only come to power backed up by a party which wanted to break up the country and so on. But actually... It's about people as well who didn't vote. And what we've seen, it's a terrible plight, an indictment of our democracy, that with every election almost in the last uh, few years, uh, since the early 90s, turnout has plummeted. I think what Labour needs to do, not talk again about left or right, what about the self-employed? One in seven workers now self-employed, often their income falling, lacking security, no paid sick leave, maternity leave. Those are the sorts of issues, actually, which I think affect people in the middle. Or, if you're talking about Tories, I know a lot of furious commuters, middle class, living around London, who are ripped off by our railway companies, and that's why I think it's a sensible centre-ground policy to say, let's bring the railways back under the control of the people of this country okay, instead of just okay, flogging okay, public okay, OK, 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 that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk oh, about we'll talk the about policies. candidates. We're here to talk about the candidates and what they are bringing to the party or otherwise. And I suppose, Owen Bennett, the question is, if Jeremy Corbyn does win, and this latest poll, it's only one poll, and you know they were all here what they would say about that. They've got another hustings tonight. But it is one poll. It is putting him very much in the lead. Do you think that there could be a split within the party, like we saw with the SDP, if, if he is the leader of the Labour Party? We heard from Yvette Cooper, for example, who said she didn't want to be in his cabinet. I think you're going to see, you won't see a cabinet of many talents, certainly of Corbyn's lead. You're going to see the cabinet of people who subscribe to his views. It's not actually that many of the Labour parliamentary party. He had to basically, or people had to beg on his behalf just to get on the, the nomination papers. We certainly haven't got a broad support in the PLP. But I think what I would just say to Owen Jones, who talks about the SNP there, he completely undermined his own argument. Because if you're saying there's this, this SNP party which is anti austerity and it's doing so well in Scotland, well, people in, in England had the chance to put them in government by voting for Labour. They could have had what would sounds like be your dream ticket of a Labour SNP coalition, anti-austerity, all that kind of stuff. 
The voters didn't want that. The voters gave their decision on that two months ago. They did not want that. I, I can't for the life of me think while well, you're espousing that should be the way to go. Owen, Owen Mark II, uh, the point I was making was that actually what really resonated... Well, you are older than me, so yes, Mark one, Oh, I blimey, guess. OK. I, oh, all right, all right. All right, boys, all all right. right. some age better than others. But, uh, no, but the point, uh, the point I was making, actually, was the reason that really resonated with people was, above all else, the sense, the fear that the SNP were party committed to breaking up the country. That's what hugely tapped into a sense of resentment amongst many English voters. And I came across that time and time again. And the point, just to respond to Kay as well, I don't think there's a point of having a discussion if it's just about personalities. You've got to talk about the policies as well and what they're actually proposing to bring to the country. Now, I think standing up for self-employed people who lack rights, uh, standing up for utilities run by the people of this country instead of foreign governments and profiteering companies, for example, uh, that actually we deal with a housing crisis particularly for the next generation who can't often afford uh, either to get their own home or to get a council house or they're ripped off by private landlords. I just think these are the issues we need to be talking about and all too often it's all about personality. I just find that a bit okay, tedious. Do, OK, let me ask you, uh, Owen Jones, about the uh, party splitting. Lots of people tweeting this afternoon saying there will be a new party called the Democratic Party. They'll uh, join forces with the Lib Dems and the Greens. What? Oh, join force with the Greens sounds a bit odd, given I would suggest that obviously people like you know supporting Jeremy Corbyn would find more common cause uh, with the Greens than than a new party splitting away from so Labour on the you right. You don't reject out of hand that there could be a new party. Well, I certainly, I certainly think that would be pretty disastrous if the right of the party marched off and did that, because in the 1980s, look what happened. They got a derisory uh, number of seats because of the nature of the electoral system, and it just helped split the anti-Tory vote. <laughs> I think, above all else, actually, what we need uh, is yeah, people right to party, actually have a coherent... Well, the, the right of the party obviously left in the 1980s, and I think anybody yeah, because, because who's the committed to building... the party, because people like Tony Benn had taken over the party, dragged it to the left, made it completely unelectable. I mean, well, you've I only mean, got to look I mean, at history. I don't understand why you're I mean, blaming the right I mean, of the party I think here. the problem is this, you know, you can have a situation where one wing of the party throws its toys out the pram because of a result they don't like. The left, I have to say, often gritted their teeth and put up with, for example, Tony Blight, even when he invaded Iraq, they didn't march off on block with all their MPs and set up a new party. The point about the Labour Party is it has to be a broad coalition. And that is whoever is leader, whether they hail from the left or the right of the party, they have to build a broad coalition of people and then go to the country and unite people, low-income, middle-income alike, to build a majority. And that, uh, that's what it has to come down to. I think it's sad to talk about you know, splits and setting up... Uh, new parties in that way because people don't like the democratic results of, a, of an election. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn can build that, build that broad coalition? And do you think Jeremy that's Corbyn's he, the man that's what he has to, to go out and convince Absolutely. the people who are starting he's, their own jobs, starting their own companies, vote for Corbyn? He's going to nationalise everything. He rejected oh, all this in the exit. We'll do it, it again. Owen, you sound like a Daily Mail uh, headline generator. Look, I think at the end of the day, he has to prove yes that he can stand up for self-employed people. Getting a bit personal this afternoon, Owen, aren't you? Owen Bennett, yeah, what I were you like going to say? I like You've had more than your fair share. Owen Bennett, what were you saying? Well, I, you know, I mean, the thing for Owen Jones, and I think it's wonderful that his, his career is going so well. He's now in the one percent of earners in this country, and I, but you know, the people like us who oh, actually care wow. about, you know, what, about how personal. they're going to pay the bills need a government that's based in the centre ground to attract votes from the Tories. The reason why the Tories are doing these things that Owen Jones doesn't like is because they're in power. Why are they in power? Because the Labour Party was seen as too left wing at the last election. They didn't win, analysis. and if they move Sorry. more and more to the left, they're not going to win again. I think it's a shame you've sorts of personal comments, as I've said, and what Labour needs, because I don't think people out there think in terms of left or right they think in terms of issues let's have a labor leadership that actually inspires people offers a coherent agenda i'd like to see whoever wins the labor leadership do that i think you know there shouldn't be these talks of splits divisions i don't think people should get personal in that way let's just have a friendly debate about issues instead of personalities all the time do you think jeremy corbyn is the, is the best man to lead the labor party I think what he's showing during this campaign is he's coming, actually bringing ideas and policies to the agenda. And the reason he's doing so much better at the moment than Yvette Cooper and Andy Burnham and Liz Kendall against all those odds is because they haven't offered at the moment a genuine inspiring alternative. If they want to beat Jeremy Corbyn, then they need to bring to the table genuine policies that inspire people. That's how you okay, defeat other candidates. OK, final thought. Before we let you go, final thought, Owen Bennett, to you, first of all. Um, with friends like Tony Blair, who, ne who needs enemies? Uh, does it help that he gets involved? Does the man who led the Labour Party to three general election victories 
um, for the first time in the history. Does it help when he gets involved? I think if I was a member of the Labour Party, yeah, I think it should help. I think you should listen to what Tony Blair's got to say. I know it's very easy for Owen Jones to talk about, and other people like Owen Jones talk about Iraq and this kind of thing, but what about the minimum wage? Um, or what about tax credits? What about Sure Start? I mean, you know, if Owen Jones and Labour supporters aren't going to defend these, these achievements of, of Tony Blair's government as they would see them, who is? Well, ironically, that's exactly what people like me are doing. It was me who defended the uh, charge of New Labour that they spent too much money, which the Tories backed. No, they didn't. It's me who's defended tax credits a few uh, days ago when the Tories launched an all-out assault on them, which it, low-paid workers depend on when the Labour leadership uh, refused to support that. It's me who's Why defended you stand the public... Why don't you stand? It's me who supports the public investment of Why don't you stand? that Labour Party for the last 13 years. Okay. Public money, which investment that's now been taken away. I I'm defending you that. You I hope that you both come back stand? very soon. Bizarre. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on Sky News this afternoon. Last word to our colleague Matt Chorley, who works for the Daily Mail. He says, hashtag Owen me, Owen you, aha. We like that. That was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> it is funny. Yeah, that's yeah, funny. Thank you. Funnier than you two. Thanks a lot for joining oh, us on Sky News this afternoon. <laughs>